Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, may His grace, mercy, and peace be with you now and always. And may He continue each day to renew you in your faith and your love for Him. Amen. Last week, we left Jonah in a pretty precarious position, didn't we? We left him floating about after he had run away from God. After he'd run from the the promise of his Lord to lead him and to direct him. After he'd run from God's guidance, we left him bobbing in the ocean, in the sea, not sure what he was going to do. As he was spitting water out of his mouth, as he was trying to paddle to keep his head above, we even hear him say the words, You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas, and the current swirled about me. All your waves and your breakers, they swept over me. The salty water quickly overpowered him. And he probably wondered to himself, will I meet my maker, who I tried to run from? But it seems to get worse instead of better, doesn't it? Because as soon as he starts to think that things are going to turn around, as soon as he does exactly what the Lord says and stops running, instead he starts to sink. Notice his words just a little further, that the seaweed wrapped up around him as if fingers were pulling him down to the deep, as if he was being swirled and pulled in to the very bottom of the sea. It seemed like things were out of his control. It seemed like things were out of his way of doing things. It seemed as if he had no hope. And so finally he cried out, O Lord, my God, as if to say, O Lord, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy upon me. We see a different side of of Jonah. A humbled man, a broken man. A man who realizes he couldn't do it on his own. A man who was lost. And as the Lord heals him, as the Lord shows him his infinite mercy, maybe we wouldn't necessarily like God's way of salvation here. Here God sent to him a great fish to swallow him up. Can you imagine the breath of that great fish or or spending three days and three nights right among the digesting food? I imagine at some point Jonah probably thought to himself, I rather would have died. But no, instead we see a different side of Jonah. Instead we see a Jonah who is a changed man who comes to the Lord and cries out, O Lord, have mercy on me. O Lord, save me. For I have sinned and I have turned my back on you. As As if he could have knelt on his knees and begged to the Lord. How many of us have been in that spot? How many of us have been on our knees begging the Lord for His mercy? How many of us have shouted out to the Lord, O Lord, have mercy on me? But notice Jonah. He's not just concerned, but he also has assurance. Right at the end of his prayer, right before before the, the the, the, the great fish spits him up onto the land, He says, salvation comes from the Lord. Salvation comes from the Lord. The promise of salvation came from God for Jonah. Jonah was not concerned. He, He knew that the Lord had rescued him with that great fish. He knew that the Lord's promise was for sure. It's almost as if he sounds like a New Testament writer, doesn't it? Peter said, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Paul later wrote himself, There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Words that are so familiar to us. Words that we hear because it's not just the words of Jonah. It's not just the words of Peter or Paul. But these are the words throughout the Bible. The words that salvation has come to a people who were were undeserving. Salvation has come to people who did not deserve God's mercy. Who did not deserve His grace. Salvation even came to to creation which was crying out to God. Crying out in need of salvation. and, And God sent salvation. God sent salvation in His own Son, Christ Jesus. In Jesus, whose very name name means Yahweh saves, or Yahweh is our salvation, He sent salvation for each one of us as Jesus died on the cross, as He gave us that restoration, as He restored us poor, miserable sinners. We know that assurance of salvation. But the Lord invites us further. He invites us to receive His rest, His reassurance. Jonah had been in a very chaotic position, wasn't he? The sea tossed him about. The waves were overcoming him. But now he's in a position of peace. As he sat in the belly of that great fish, he sat in a position knowing that he was in the hand of the Lord. 
And what a great assurance He had. What a great promise. What a great promise is given to each one of us as Christian people. God's promise of rest and restoration. Because here we are. We are a people who are in a chaotic world. We are in a, a people who are in a world that is twisted and turned upside down. A world that is broken by sin. A world that literally cries out to God. And we live in a world that is in need of a Savior. And we know that Savior. We know that Savior who has given us His rest. That Savior, Christ Jesus. He has given us His holy rest. His Sabbath rest. He has given us that promise that when we come to Him, that He will renew our strength. But sometimes we grow weary of that, don't we? We grow weary because we do live in a world that takes our energy, that takes our hope, that takes our strength. We live in a world that is full of sinful sin that seems to sap not only our spiritual strength, but saps our physical strength and saps our emotional strength. We live in a world that is full of people and things that lead us from God. And so we grow weary. We grow weary of hearing His Word. We grow weary of hearing His promise and through prayer that he'll, hear our, that he'll hear each of our prayers. We grow weary of worship. We grow weary of His Supper. All things He has given us to restore us. He has given us these things in our lives each day. Prayer to come to Him. To lift up our concerns. To lift up our hurts. To lift up our joys. And He gives us the promise that He'll hear us, but not only that, answer us. He has given us that time in His Holy Word. Guidance for our lives. Instruction, even though written 2,000 years ago, still just as effective and important for us today. He's given us time of worship. A time where we can shut out all that's in the world. A time that for an hour, we can close off all that distracts us from Him. He's given us His Holy Communion. Where we do receive His body and blood where He strengthens us, where He restores us as His people. God knows the burdens that we bear. He knows the weights that we carry. He knows what we are struggling against. And He knows how much we need that restoration. But we grow weary of it. We grow weary because we try to do it on our own. We grow weary because we try to face this world with our own strength and with our own understanding. We grow weary because we have so many other things that distract us from God. Many of you are, are retired. And so you know that even though you're retired, there are so many things going on in your life. Things that keep you busy. Things that distract you. Even those of you who are still working. You know the calls of your job. The daily responsibilities you have. For those of you who have kids or grandkids. You know that there's a great deal of stress and chaos in your household. Because it's not as though it's easy. Because there are so many influences for your children today. For those of you who are kids, who are children, who are young adults, you know that there's the responsibility of homework. You know that there's the responsibility of being liked by your friends. Those other responsibilities that you have. Finding time for God. And the list goes on and on, doesn't it? Those of us who may be drowning in debt. Those of us who are drowning with difficulties in our marriages. Those of us who are drowning in the difficulties of losing the one that we love and trying to live this life without them. Think about your own life for just a moment. Think about the weights that you have been called to bear. The weights that you have in your lives. Not one of us can, can say for a minute that our lives are without these strains or without these stresses. Not one of us can say for a minute, even if we wish we could, that we haven't known the weight of pain, the weight of loss, the weight of being alone at times. We know the weights of this world. We know the weariness it brings. And we know that at times it becomes overwhelming and too much for us to bear. At times we can relate to exactly where Jonah was. That no matter how hard we try, no matter how hard we paddle against the waves, there's nothing we can do that keeps sweeping us down, keep pushing us over. We know that even as we try to swim back to the surface, the seaweed keeps pulling us down to the bottom. We know that even as we gasp for breath, trying to pull in that air, all we do is pull in the salt water which burns our throats and our lungs. And maybe you know exactly what I mean. And maybe you've been there. Maybe you've been there drowning right alongside Jonah. 
Maybe you've been there flailing for your life until there was nothing you could do. And all you could do was cry out, O oh Lord, my God. O oh Lord, have mercy on me. And all you could do is cry out to the Lord from that place, that deep, dark place, that overwhelming place. Just cry out to your Lord and your Savior. Cry out to Him. And know that salvation is yours. And know that even though you ha do not have the strength, even though you do not have the power, even though you are weak, He is strong. Our Lord is mighty to save. And He reaches down into the deep. He reaches down through the muck and the mire. He reaches down into the seaweed and He rips it apart. He reaches down with His strong right hand, as the psalmist says, and He pulls us out. He pulls us out of the deep. And He picks us up and He carries us. And He restores us. Even us, even us poor, miserable sinners, even us, those who have wandered from His past, even us who know the sure promise of salvation, He reaches down and He lifts us up because He knows the currents of life are overwhelming. He knows the currents of life only lead to death. And He knows how much we need His salvation. And our God, He is a God of salvation. Yahweh saves Yahweh is our salvation. Yahweh is your salvation and He is mine. Yahweh is the salvation for each one of us who went to the cross, who lived and died for you and for me. Yahweh is our salvation. Who, When we could do nothing to help ourselves, when we were too weak, when we flailed in death, that He pulled us out and He breathed that air of His Holy Spirit into our lungs and restored us. Now sometimes when the Lord saves us, it's not the way we want it to be. Some, sometimes, maybe it's a bit smelly. Jonah probably didn't expect the Lord to save him by having a great fish swallow him. Sometimes when, when the Lord saves us, when He provides for us, there's still going to be things that are painful in our lives. There's still going to be things that we shed tears over. There are still going to be things that hurt us. But the one thing we will know for certain is that our Lord saves and that even as we continue to walk those paths, even as we continue to struggle through this life, He walks with us. He carries us along. He did not leave us to die in our sin, in the muck and mire of our death, but He picks us up and He carries us. No matter where we are in our lives, no matter who we are, no person, no person is he, will He leave behind. He'll reach down and He'll bring us to Himself. And He invites us. He invites us to hear His promise. Come to Me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take My yoke upon you and learn from Me, for I am gentle and I am humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For My yoke is easy and My burden is light. Rest in the Lord. The Lord calls us to have a Sabbath rest in Him. Take time. The word Sabbath literally means stop. Stop and rest in the Lord. Put those things out of your mind and out of your heart. Those things that continue to overwhelm you. Put those things out of your mind because the Lord is offering you His rest, His peace. Those things, those things are earthly things. Those things, those things are temporary things. The promise that God gives us, the peace that He gives us, that is an eternal thing. It is His eternal peace, His eternal promise. So rest in Him. Rest in Him with the full confidence that as His sons and daughters, that one day He will reach down. He will call you from this earth, from this planet, and He will call you to be with Him. He will call you and reach down and pull you to be with Him forever in heaven. He will reach down so that you may know His full restoration. The whole completeness of being in communion in, with Him. For that is the promise our Lord has. That is the promise that we have each and every day in of our lives. That is the promise that even in the depths of despair of this life, even in the de deepest, darkest sea of this life, that there is light. There is the light of salvation. That while we may not be vomited up on the shore, 
that we will be brought up to be with our Lord. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, there are many burdens that we carry in this life. There are many things that make us weary, weary of your word, weary of prayer, weary of being with you. We pray that you would forgive us and that you would strengthen us. We pray that you would remove these things from our lives and that you, that you would reach down and pull us up. Lord, I know that there are those among us who, who are drowning, those who are overwhelmed, those who are, can barely keep their heads above water. I pray that they would know your strength and that they would know your peace. I know that there are those, Lord, who in the past have experienced these things. And I pray that you would be with them as they continue to work through them. And I thank you, Lord, for those, those who you have pulled out of the deep, those who have, you've reached down and that you have resuscitated, those who have you have restored. Lord, reassure us that as your sons and daughters, that you, that you will never leave us, that you will never look, that you will know there and never turn your back on us. Re re reassure us that as your sons and daughters, that you will always fight for us, that you will always save us. For you are the God who saves. You are Yahweh who is our salvation. And may your salvation be with us now and always. May we know the full confidence that Jesus is the one who died on the cross for us. He is the one who gave his life for us so that we might have life forever with you. May his name be the name that leads us, guides us, and directs us. May his name be the name that we pray in each day. And may his name be the name we pray in now. Amen.